Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. The limited edition version of the Dragonette Prophecy dropped this Tuesday and I headed over to my local bookstore on the day of release. After flipping through all the new pages and stashing this novel in my collection, I have a lot of thoughts. Today I'll be diving into what exactly is featured in the new limited edition book, give my thoughts on these new editions, and break down all the brand new content in detail. I'll be very clear when things shift to spoilers, the majority of this video will be spoiler free. Don't worry, I won't ruin any of the specific surprises in case you're about to get your copy as well. I'm very excited to talk about this limited edition book, you guys. But for a begin, a huge shout out to my patrons. DuggerLover95, Slightest Wild, Thistle, Noobtoe, Primer Nuke, Avril, and Pancake. Thank you all so much for supporting me. Links to their social medias are in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. The Reckonet Prophecy Limited Edition was released on October 1st in honor of Wings of Fire turning 12 years old this year. It's essentially a collectible for super fans, with bonus content added after the original story to keep us entertained and excited. I'm unsure of just how exactly limited these will be and when or if they will ever go off sale. My guess is they'll stop shipping out to stores by the time it hits the end of the year, but we don't know anything for sure. Either way, it's safe to pick up this book earlier than later if you plan on having a full collection of everything off. Yes, it does ship internationally through Amazon. So, what's exactly in the book? Well, we start off with an entirely brand new cover. It features some gorgeous art of clay in the mountain cave system. Joy Aang just absolutely did not disappoint with this, and even after seeing it so many times online, nothing can compare to taking a look at this beautiful piece in person. The special edition novel also has red page edges, allowing for it to look stunning and stand out on your shelf. I just love this honestly, and I wish more books had different colors on their edges. I mean, why not add something nice and extra? It just makes things look even cooler in my opinion. The back cover is not left bare as we're given this jaw-dropping new artwork of Queen Scarlet, also made by Joy Yang. It's so lively, real, and bursting with colors and emotion. Scarlet's design is flawless here and the background adds so much. Having something this beautiful to display on your shelf is amazing and so eye-catching. Both the front and the back are nicely textured. The logo literally pops from the cover, and you can feel the smoothness of both clay scales and Scarlet's jewelry. I just love all the sensory details as always, and it really makes this book perfect to hold in your hands and carry around. On the front page opening, we can see some additional shots of the stalactites from the cave system. In the back, skywing flags fly high. For anyone curious and a little confused like I initially was, all the bonus content can be found at the back of the book. Once you finish rereading the main iconic story we all know and love, you'll find a few things for ultimate fan wings. Starting it all off is a never-before-seen brief Q&A with Tui. Following that is a message from this amazing author herself, and then everything ends with a deleted chapter from her original draft of The Dragonet Prophecy. I have quite a few thoughts on this limited edition novel. Again, spoilers won't come until a little later, so I'll dive into everything more in depth at that point. Here I'll ultimately come to the conclusion of whether or not you should buy this version of book one yourself. One thing I will say is that I absolutely adore all the bonus content. The deleted chapter is both adorable and heartbreaking, and the Q&A was super insightful and not as basic as I was expecting. Tui's message to Fanwings was very sweet as well. The cover, both front and back, truly stands out with this eye candy nature. I love everything new that we got. But really other than that, there isn't much. While there are a few types of original material, all of it is small. I found myself discovering everything special about this book, reading through its new pages, in a matter of minutes. Is that really worth $10 or more and your shelf space? 
I do think that question ultimately comes down to you. For fanwing collectors like me, who are absolutely obsessed with Wings of Fire, it's wonderful to have every piece of content that comes out. But if you're more of a very casual fan who's expecting a ton of new content, don't put your hopes up too much. All of it that we got is definitely worth reading, but I just wish there was more of it to make things feel special at the beginning, too. Maybe we could have gotten some kind of unseen scroll from the Dragonettes of Destiny or other characters introducing this edition, like how the guidebook is formatted. Perhaps something with Clay actually starting to remember the deleted scene now that he's really thinking and reminiscing about it all these years later, in reflection. That would be a good lead into things the way Wings of Fire usually does so. Either something small like that, or an even tinier addition of some new page decorations, opening guide alterations, doodles of the different tribe details mentioned maybe, and other things. The fact that everything new within the pages comes at the very back makes it feel like there's kind of less to be found all around. Even just a few extra pages, and I think things would have been a lot more fanwing necessary. If you cannot afford the book right now, I'd honestly see if your library will ever carry it. But if you can and truly want to see something this beautiful and special on your shelf forever, go for it. Just keep moderate expectations on what to read. Because even though the content is great, there's just not as much as I was particularly hoping for to warrant a new physical copy dropping. Do things seem a bit rushed in the production? I think so. However, I wouldn't say that I regretted my purchase at all. I thoroughly enjoy reading everything I read, and I'm so happy with all that was in here. If this book is for you, completely depends on your expectations, I'd say. Keep them low, and you'll be quite satisfied, I think. And now, it's time to delve into some spoiler territory with my thoughts on the content, using specifics. I have so many praises when it comes to everything new that we got, but I can't discuss it without detailing certain events in their fullest. You have been warned for spoilers, fanwings. Going in order of everything, the Q&A really did surprise me. It actually got me thinking about the writing brilliance of the Dragonettes of Destiny. The way each of them think and feel is so different, and in a group from a story, you need that. You have to have those interconnecting or sometimes conflicting beliefs, values, and behaviors. It's how the story starts and why things don't begin, go, and end in a satisfying or easy way for our characters. You need that conflict to tell any tale. Tui's ideas she presented were quite genius and part of the reason why Wings of Fire is so great. It started strong from the beginning because of how she formed these protagonists and this world using those elements. Additionally, the short note to Fanmings really made me smile while reading it. The fact that the fans really inspire Tui is just so sweet. Wings of Fire may have never gone as far as it has without the creations, art, writing, crafts, worlds, games, made by fans. And of course, everything concludes with a deleted chapter from the Dragonette Prophecy. This was still a version of it that would have been refined had it ended up in the final copy like originally intended. And despite how both absolutely adorable and heartbreaking this chapter was, I completely agree with Tui's reasoning for why it was cut. This scene defeats the entire purpose of Clay's story within Book 1. After all, if we knew the way he truly hatched, understanding it wasn't the monstrosity rendition Kestrel interpreted, then we wouldn't connect with Clay. We wouldn't understand him and his struggles as well. That was something to be saved for the end of the book. A self-discovery journey that we can understand without having to read pages describing the incident. It also doesn't dumb down the reader to any extent, something Wings of Fire has always been good at preventing. It's how these books apply for any age. It is truly beautiful how we empathize with Clay and feel a sense of injustice and confusion. How can he be a monster after all that he does? We learn with him that this isn't true, and it takes a lot to get us and Clay to that point. Diving into the writing of this chapter, I really like how the Guardians are described. I can envision them so perfectly with these descriptions, which I found very nice. It was utterly adorable to get to see things from baby Clay's eyes. 
The way I was imagining this mud being so young just had my heart melting, and I need new fan art of this scene right now. It was equally heartbreaking towards the middle. And man, this really drives home just how awfully the Guardians treated the Dragoness of Destiny. Even if part of it was because of the ignorance they had. Which we as the readers know, but not Clay here. I felt very impacted by this scene. It ended on a bittersweet note. Clay and Tsunami connect, despite their differences. But things just don't feel right to this baby Mudwing and his new sister. Nothing is how it should be. How his instincts made him. This ending really emphasizes how terrible life under the mountains was, honestly. It gets you feeling so many emotions, and it was beautifully crafted. Again, the new content added is amazing. I love deleted scenes, kind words, and pretty art. I just wish there was a little more added to the start of this book to make it worth being sold new. Also, this is really random, but is anybody else's cover always popping back up? It just sticks up no matter what I lay on it. I know that happens to a certain extent with all paperbacks, but it's really bad for this one. One of my friends mentioned it happening to hers as well, and I don't think we're alone in this. I don't know, but it's just something I had to mention because I was curious if it's happening to y'all. But what do you guys think? What was your favorite section if you've read it? And if you haven't, will you pick up a copy? Let me know down below as always. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.